I want to start the program with a few lessons we learned this week thanks to the Essendon Football Club forcing out their CEO for his Christian beliefs and associations. First lesson is Dan Andrews is a hater and a hypocrite. The Victorian Premier must be supremely confident of a thumping victory in the coming state election. Why else would he opt to enter a divisive debate, stoke religious intolerance and insult more than a million Victorian Catholics, not to mention Jews and Muslims who share similar views on abortion and LGBTQIA issues? I don't support those views. That kind of intolerance, that kind of hatred, bigotry is just wrong. And to dress that up as anything other than bigotry is, um, well, just obviously false. Doubling down on his comments that Essendon's former CEO's church promoted hatred, bigotry and intolerance, the Premier then had the gall to say his commentary was motivated by concern for the mental health of members of the LGBT community. So people can get all upset about the fact that someone resigned. I'm much more focused on the fact that people are harming themselves and sometimes taking their own lives because of bigotry and prejudice. What utter unmitigated dross. The man responsible for plunging untold numbers of Victorians into the depths of despair, isolation and depression with six lockdowns and a host of other cruel, unusual and unnecessary restrictions thinks alienating scores of devout Christians somehow advances the community's mental health? Where is the Premier's concern for the mental health of Christians or Muslims or Jews told that their belief system is not acceptable in Victoria and can disqualify them from their dream job. What about the concern for the mental health of around two in five Australians who voted no in the same-sex marriage plebiscite? It seems the Premier's concern for his fellow man is rather selective indeed. Another lesson we learned this week is that some religions are more equal than others in the eyes of the leftist AFL. It's clear that Catholics, Muslims and Jews, indeed just about anybody who is relig religiously devout, is not welcome at the AFL or its clubs. I mean, sure, they'll take your membership money, but don't think about holding a position of influence in football. The league's determination to play divisive political games has seen a devout Christian forced to choose between his church and his club. Now, let's have a look at how the media treated a Christian pasture of that very church. The essence of the message, though, was that Jesus is all about life. Okay. We're inclusive. We're not homophobic. We're for life and we're for love. You're not homophobic. No. You say homosexuality is a sin. So many other churches are loving and read it completely differently to you. Yeah. But shouldn't you be more inclusive? We are. We, we're very... No, you're not. You're just saying... Yeah, but comparing abortion to the Holocaust, you're saying well, I, I was... if, if, you, if you're gay, you're going to go to hell. That's, that's not really being well, inclusive and loving. To be fair, I didn't say that. Uh, well, the, words to that effect. Uh, and and no, it's, that's, uh, it's, it's on your church website, too. No, I did not say those words. I said that Jesus offers life and love to all people. And that invitation goes to everybody. We're okay. all sinners. Right. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus okay. came to... I'm not to... going to have a battle of the Bible. <laughs> <It> is... <laughs> sure. Worth noting that David Koch is not just a Channel 7 anchor, but he's also chairman of the Port Adelaide Football Club. But it's not just God-fearing folk who are not welcome at the AFL. Even atheists like me are not safe. Well, not if you don't embrace the AFL's toxic identity politics. It's clear that at the AFL and other sporting codes, some religions are more equal than others. We saw the double standard this week with a Christian forced to resign while a Muslim AFLW player, Hanin Zarika, well, she's allowed to act in accordance with her beliefs and not play in the Pride round. Now, you'll recall the unhinged reaction earlier this year when Christian NRL players didn't want to wear their club's Pride jersey. This is all pure anti-Christian bigotry. One would think the AFL and NRL and other sporting codes would have a little sympathy for a religion that is under attack in much of the world. Christians are slaughtered for their beliefs in countries like Nigeria and persecuted in much of the Middle East and parts of Asia. Now, the third lesson we learned this week is that the Essendon Football Club is a shambles 
symbolic mess. New President Dave Barham has shown himself to be thoroughly inept and there are now serious concerns that his actions and commentary have opened the club up to legal action. Barham said that Andrew Thorburn was given a choice between retaining his role as CEO at the club or his position with his church group. Take a listen. In interview processes, you're not allowed to ask about people's religious... It's, not, it's against the law. But what we did, as soon as we saw them, we acted. What's also against the law, Dave, is for an employer to discriminate against an employee on the basis of their religious beliefs or activity. Leading workplace lawyer Josh Bornstein explains, requiring an employee to choose between their job and their religious activity can constitute unlawful discrimination. Bornstein also told ABC Radio, based off media reports, there's a prima facie case of religious discrimination. Another employment law expert, Paul O'Halloran, wrote, Mr Thorburn has the right protected by the laws enacted by the parliaments of Victoria and the Commonwealth to be a member of whatever lawful religion he chooses. Freedom of religion is protected by Victoria's Equal Opportunity Act 2010. The legal protection means that a person cannot be treated unfavourably because they hold or do not hold a lawful religious belief or view. There are similar protections in the Fair Work Act, which covers most employees in Australia, preventing employers from taking adverse action against an employee, including because of their religious or political opinions. This brings me to the fourth lesson. Andrew Thorburn must step up and make Essendon pay here. If not for his own sake, for the benefit of other Christians who may not be as financially blessed as he is. Thorburn cannot turn the other cheek. That will only see more of this corporate bastardry. Organisations will only stop behaving in this intolerant manner when there is a financial cost associated with their woke grandstanding. And finally, talking about woke grandstanding, the football media has again shown itself to be one-dimensional and often divorced from reality when it comes to these important off-field issues, whether it's racial politics, misogyny or religious vilification. The uniformly woke schmucks in the football media can be relied upon to sing off the same AFL-approved hymn sheet. Mm.